Okay, what are good projects for design build? And this slide came from an Everyday Count seminar that Doug Gransberg developed for Federal Highway about two or three years ago. I think each state, as they're going through their growing process, will have to come up with their list of criteria for what's going to make a good design build project in Tennessee. It's not going to be the same as a good design build project in an adjacent state. There'll be similarities. But I'm willing to guess that Tennessee is going to have their own criteria, at least for the first five years, that'll be different than some other states. There'll always be a need for time savings, and that's the one advantage with design build. But uh, picking the right project in Tennessee for the use of design build will be important. Staff restraints, constraints will be important. Um, initially, you may spend more administrative time with design build than you do with bid build. Developing that procurement process, refining the RFP documents, certainly going through the ATC process will be time consuming if you haven't done that on before on a, a regular basis. I should have incorporated a slide from yesterday, but I, I did not. It was a slide showing the number of ATCs submitted on projects in the state of Washington. And they had several of their 10 research projects where the number of ATCs exceeded 60 or 70 for one project. So people on Leah's staff are going to have to coordinate that process of looking at alternative technical concepts, determining whether they're approved equal or betters, and determining whether they're acceptable for use in the proposal process. That alone is a resource drain on the agency that we don't have with bid build. We get tremendous advantages from ATCs. We'll talk about that later. But it's also a tremendous resource drain in coordinating the review of those ATCs. And the state has to be prepared for that when it starts this design build effort. OK, so those are all schedule-related issues. Can we take advantage of those schedule issues with design build? Those are all issues that must be considered if you're looking at um, candidates for design build. Project complexity, um, certainly an issue, and it has been across the country, depending on the type of project. We've had large interchange projects, um, probably some monster design build projects, with starting with the original I-15 corridor in preparation for the Olympics in 2002. How many of you remember the word use of design build at that time? Does anybody remember that project? Gerald does? Were you involved with that, Gerald? I was involved in the Utah Department of Transportation construction staff that helped them for a year to, you had 60 bridges on one at one time downtown Houston. And so I was yeah. a lot of fun. I'm always puzzled by the fact when I go out to give a presentation like this, there's somebody in the audience that knows something about a project more than I do. <laughs> Mr. Varney is now the expert on that project. But yeah, that was amazing for the time. That was 1998 was the procurement. I think they awarded the contract in 99, somewhere around there, in preparation for the 2002 Olympics. 2002. $1.3 billion design build contract, about 20 miles in length, 135 interstate structures, bridges, 120 some utility relocations that were all handled by the design builder, endless right of way issues, partially handled by the design builder, at least the preparation was done by the design builder. It had a $50 million award fee as an incentive and Utah had criteria for quality and timeliness to, to, for the contractor to obtain that $50 million award fee. That was their incentive for quality and schedule. They ended up achieving and getting most of that award fee and the project was completed weeks or months before the Olympics, Gerald. On time and on schedule, though, and it came out to be a relative success for Utah DOT, but that was the first mega design build project that we've had. It was followed up by a number of others around the country, but they're not all mega projects. They're not all public-private partnerships. They're not all toll roads. And we've had a number of small design build projects that have been successful, as small as 
I would say less than a million dollars. Ohio, DOT, and PennDOT did a number of bridge replacements that were all design, build, low bid, and successfully done. So it, it has a wide range of applications, but can be used for some very complex projects. One of the things I'd like for um, the, all of everyone from the regions and from headquarters to note on this slide is as you've been preparing for TM meetings, you've heard a lot of discussions about what are good design build candidates. And as you may note on this slide, it's, it's every different functional area <coughs> has to be taken into consideration when you select a design build project. So it's not just the roadway design or the environmental features or the bridges. It's everyone working together to try and pick what's the best candidate project. So right now, um, Leah and I have had many candidates. I mean, we get all sorts of projects given to us to consider for design build. And that's why we reach back out to you in all kinds of different functional areas, is for us to work at it as a team and to determine across all four regions you know, what projects are best to be selected for the following years. So just keep that in mind um, throughout today and tomorrow and the future when you're looking at alternative delivery projects. It does take an effort of every different functional group in order to make that determination. A few other considerations. Quality is sometimes a, a very high consideration for some state DOTs. Will they get a different type of design, a different product when they involve innovation from the industry? Will there be less impact on the traveling public? And I'll talk in a few minutes about a project in Minnesota that public concern was very high in the mind of Minnesota DOT that let the design build contract. Are there unique traffic management issues with um, this project that would lend itself to design build. Will the design builder schedule and develop a maintenance and traffic plan that will accommodate the public out there and minimize the impact for the public? And is the project size an issue for design and construction funding? So all these are issues in the consideration of what is a good candidate for design build.